Good morning, Girl Scouts. My name is Sarah Kelly, and I am the Director of Program and Partnerships for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. And today, I am going to be working with you on earning your Space Science Explorer Badge. So today, we are going to be working on Step 2, which is uh, observing the moon. And then on your own or with your parents, you can work on Step 1, which is explore the sun, and Step 3, which is meet the stars. But as we wait for a couple people to join us this morning, I want you to go ahead and type in your log or in, in the messages who you are, where you're from, and your favorite planet besides Earth. So think about that. What's your favorite planet besides Earth? And I'm going to catch stuff as it's starting to blow away. All right, as you guys are doing that and people are joining, I had to phone a friend because my trusty computer wouldn't let me get to my camera. So we are keeping Kylo Ren distance from each other, making sure that we're being safe in this time of quarantine. Um, and I'm also relying on my buddy, Megan, who is uh, checking that chat log for me um, because again, I can't get on my computer, um, but I wanted to make sure that we are here to provide this opportunity. So. All right, when I think about my favorite planet, first of all, I've always been key to Pluto, even though Pluto has been decided that it's not a planet, it's a dwarf planet because of its size, but it still does the rotation around the sun like all other planets. So even though I'm a hashtag bring, black, bring back Pluto as a planet, that I would say is my favorite one. I, I felt like truly saddened by it being called a dwarf planet and not a planet. Plus, I always learned the planet by um, my very unfortunate mom just bought nine pizzas. And if my mom couldn't buy nine pizzas, I think I said that in reverse because I got a camera making me nervous. Um, then what can my mom be getting for us? So uh, we need the pizzas. That's so important. All right. So I see you guys are all coming on. So again, we're going to come back to this. Um, and what the book is really telling you is to take the time to observe the moon. Did you know that the moon stays out 12 hours a day? That's half the day. So sometimes you can come out in a, a sunlit sky like today and you will see the moon. Probably won't as much today because we're very cloudy here in Ohio. Um, but it's 12 hours and you see different parts of the moon. And why is that? Like why does the moon look like it changes shape every night? For those who guessed, it's because of the way that the sun is reflecting, you're right. The moon always stays a round shape, very similar to the earth. And like the earth rotates around the sun, the moon rotates around the earth. And that's what gives us the different phases because it's that sun reflection. So if you go out into the, into the night sky or into the early morning sky, you'll see that it'll either be a big bright moon, and I always love those because those are full moons and it's almost like you don't need night vision or a flashlight because everything gets lit, but sometimes you'll see nothing or just a little crescent of a moon and that's how it's the light reflection. So the first thing we want to do is really learn about those different phases and if you pull up your Girl Scout, like you can go through the VTK, really the best place to even look at moon information is on NASA's site and that site is nasa.gov backslash moon and it'll tell you all about this stuff. So if you look here, you can see like a new moon starts fully dark and then to the right, um, you're going to get a little bit of a crescent. Then you're going to get that first quarter moon and then you're going to get your waxing gibbous your full moon, then it moves down to your waning gibbous, your third quarter moon, your waxing crescent, and then it brings you all the way back up to your new moon. So a fun way to be able to learn how to do this is utilizing a handy dandy tree. Today I'm using Oreos, um, but really any round food that you have in your pantry would work. So Oreos are a lot of fun because when you pull them apart, you kind of get the white moon. So there's that moon shape, but I've used uh, 
thin mints before, dosy -si doughs before, so all those Girl Scout cookies um, to support my local scouts. Or you can even use moon pies. Haha, <laughs> get it? Moon pie. Um, anything like that. So I also attach to the meeting invite, but also um, Megan's going to attach it to this. We created a little easy to do moon phase worksheet. Do you have to do get the worksheet to do this? Absolutely not. But what's nice about it is it just gives you a good visual. So as you're creating your own moon phases, you can go ahead and do them on the sheet. We have a little bit of wind today because I'm taking it outside for some sun. Um, so ignore that I have to kind of put it under here. But what we want to do is take these Oreos here. And we want to make these moons, different phases of the moon, so we can learn all about those. So I can be really easy. It already looks like a, uh, what kind of moon does this look like? I should ask you guys. It's dark, doesn't have any light reflecting on it. If you guessed a new moon, you're right. So I can even get really easy and just put that right there to make a new moon. But then I need to make a waxing crescent. Woo, I got a bug in my face. So here's my full moon. Well, I should ask you guys, I already gave you the answer, but what the white, the full circle, what does that already look like? A full moon. So you're right, we can put that full moon right there. But now we have to figure out all of these different phases of the moon. So one of the easy ways I think to do that is really to eat it to pull off that good old frosting in the center of the oreo but my mom told me never to talk with my mouth full so i don't want to try to eat and talk to you guys and get oreos everywhere and my cameraman friend appreciates that i'm not doing that so today i'm going to use a knife but you really you can do it any way that you want you can bite into it to get a crescent you can use this as a scraping tool so because i want to make a waxing crescent i'm going to kind of already shit oh it's going to fall apart with my knife oh, we'll fix that and then scrape that rest of that off it's just cold enough that it wants to all come off which is a good problem to have if you really like Oreos and then push that in a little just because I want it to look aesthetically pleasing for you guys and just like that I have a waxing crescent moon and if you want to get really particular you can get that rest of that frosting off so there's my waxing crescent but Okay, I wanna like see what else. So I don't know, what is your favorite moon phase? After you do this, you're gonna figure this out. And for those who know me, know that I'm obsessed with the word gibbous. I don't know why I find it super funny. So I am partial to the gibbous moon phases, whether it be waxing or waning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out another Oreo cookie and I'm gonna make a waxing gibbous, which is almost like the reverse of the crescent. But this time we're going to take just the crescent part. I'm going to use a new knife, use the crescent part, take that off of our Oreo. And just like that, we have a gibbous moon. And because the darkness, we're going to put this way, that makes it a waxing gibbous. So again, we can do this for all of our phases. We can... Uh, figure out those different phases, learn about them so we see what they look like. So when we go outside into our night sky and look at that moon, we're able to identify which moon phase it is. And then if we utilize our food to do it, what's even better is we have a whole bunch of snacks to eat later. And if you guys are like me, I like to eat my snacks. So I'll spare that again until we're all done. But after we figure out the moon phases, we're gonna wanna be able to create a My Moon book. And I just utilized some crepe paper or construction paper um, to make my book. You guys can use plain paper. Really, it doesn't matter as long as you have a good uh, thing to draw on. I'm using crayons because anytime I can use crayons, I want to. Uh, but you can use colored pencils, uh, colored pens, anything along those lines. But just something that you can draw pictures of the moon. And you're going to want to create a moon book. So here's my moon book right here. I already created it. It's the magic of television when you put, you know, the casserole in the oven and you pull it out three seconds later and it's all done, voila, mine's all done. So I folded it in half. You can put little, you know, holes in it and tie it together and make it fancy. I just used the good old staple method. 
Um, but what I did was I went outside for several nights just to look at the moon and see what it looked like. Um, and I also went out at different times because if you didn't know, based on the moon, I mean, based on the Earth's position, the moon's going to come up and down. Its horizon's going to be different every night. So you have to kind of give it a good look. Like, where is it? Some nights it looks like it starts behind my trees in my backyard. Some nights or some mornings I get up, it still looks in the same position, just higher in the sky. So you're going to want to do a little research mission to figure out where it is and if it's a cloudy night like we've had a lot recently in Ohio it makes it a little hard that's when I go to my computer and see what NASA has to tell me but what you're going to want to do with your parents or your friends is go outside tonight when it gets dark and I even think go outside in the morning so sometimes at seven o'clock you get a perfect view of the moon and you're going to want to draw what you see so a couple weeks ago I came outside when we had a beautiful full moon here in Ohio um, and I have these huge pine trees in my backyard and right behind it was the moon shining through so in my drawing and I am not like Rachel or Marissa who are very artistic I am artistically challenged but I try to draw here my trees and get the fact that the moon was shining through those trees that big full moon and then a couple nights later I went out and I was able to see, hold on, I can't get the page to flip. I was able to see this right here. This was, uh, uh, oh, I'm gonna mess it up. This was my wax, or uh, waxing, no, the, yeah, this was my waning crescent. See, I had to think for a minute because you see that it's over on the left side and that means that it's going to a new moon, not going to a full moon. And here's the roof of my house and this big crescent just sat right there. It was so amazing. I was just staring at it for a while. I actually tried to take a picture so I should, could show you guys today. But um, if you've ever tried to take a picture of the moon, it just always shines as a big white ball. You can't actually see that good shape that's being projected. So um, from there, I was like, hmm, I'm going to make a prediction in a couple days what moon would I see and my prediction was because again it was a waxing crescent it was gonna be a new moon and you can kind of tell on there that you can barely see my new moon because the moon, new moon isn't really projecting much light so you might get a little bit of shape around it but it's mostly dark like our full Oreo that we haven't pulled in, in uh, half um, and then from there, I was like, okay, well, if that's a, a new moon, what's going to be next? And it's going to be my waxing crescent. So I made a couple guesses on there what I thought would be next, and I can continue to do it. So I can either go out every night and draw what I see, or I can make guesses and then go out every night to see if I'm right. But you're not going to always see, it doesn't go uh, completely from waxing crescent to uh, first quarter to waxing gibbous because it takes 29 and one half days for our moon to fully cycle through all of its phases. So 29 and a half days, if you put almost 30 pages in your book and go out every night, you will see the full moon phase here. So when you have learned about those phases and you've created your little moon book, um, that is going to allow you to earn step two, which is observe the moon. And again, there's so many great resources out there. If you are a Girl Scout, um, you can go on the volunteer toolkit and they have great moon facts out there. They also have um, pictures so you can kind of see that you can see the moon in the daylight light you can also see the moon at night look they have a similar moon to what I showed you guys um, so these are great resources but again if you don't have them that's okay because we have access to wonderful wonderful um, research by people like NASA and they have a full site devoted to the moon how cool is that I always think to myself 
why do I love the moon so much? And I know that that's odd because who just loves the moon? But as a transplanted Ohioan, I feel very connected to the fact that Neil Armstrong is from Ohio. And actually just an hour north from here is the Neil Armstrong Museum, who does a ton of programs for us. If you guys have not been there, regardless of whether you're in another country, you're in California, you're in Florida, or you're even in Ohio, you should go to that museum. It is a lot of fun and really gives a lot of good insight about how Neil got on the moon and what that looked like. I also love the movie Hidden Figures, if you guys haven't seen it, because it talks about how the women supported Neil Armstrong getting on to the moon. How amazing is that? So I feel like Neil and I, even though I'm a transplant Ohioan, are connected in some way. And then I also think John Glenn, he's from Ohio. And we know that John Glenn did so much for the space program. You can fly out of the John Glenn Airport in Columbus. I have several times. Um, there's also the Glenn Research Institute for NASA up in the Cleveland area. So there's that connection too. Um, my other favorite thing is at night in the summer, but really camp. Camp is my favorite time that it's just so no light pollution. You can go out and you can look at the sky and you can see all of the stars, which that's the third step here. You really get a chance to just see how clear that sky gets and get to see a really great like pictures of what the moon looks like and all the, you know, dots on the moon. And you might even find the man on the moon. How cool is that? So again, I thank you guys for joining me today. I feel very uh, connected to the moon, as I said. I don't know why. Um, I utilize people like my brother Sean or Megan Remy, who is my buddy today, um, to tell me more about the stars because even though I think the stars are pretty and I love them, I am not the person who can identify the different constellations. But generally speaking, I love the moon. I love that I can eat Oreos and talk about the moon. And I actually even love drawing the moon in my moon book. So if you are not a Girl Scout and you like what we're talking about and want to learn more, don't forget to go to girlscouts.org Girl backslash join and learn more about that because we have so much fun in Girl Scouts. It's a great place to be. And also, don't forget to join us at 2 o'clock today. Um, my friend and buddy Layla Ehlers is going to be doing a dance workshop. It's connected to the brownie badge, dancer badge, um, but I'm sure that that's going to be a little fun and I know that we all need a little space to move and stretch and and get going and you can even do it outside because look how gorgeous it is today but again two o'clock tune in for Layla if you want to learn more about Girl Scouts go to girlscouts.org backslash join um, and um, lastly, what I want to know is how you guys did this project. So in the feed, make sure that you post pictures of your moons and what kind of medium you used. Again, I knew I used Oreos. Um, I also want you guys to share about your books and your moon books um, and what you see in the night sky. So don't forget to let me know all of the great things that you learned about the moon. Go outside tonight, go outside tomorrow night. Hey, what else do we have to do? Outside is a great place to be. And again, we'll see you at two o'clock today. Thank you guys. And now it's time for my Oreo.